Jean Gaffney and his deplorable relationship with the N64 classic Buck Bumble. Hello and welcome to episode 46 of Chet and John's Reassuring New Finite Gaming Playlist. My name is Chet Royvis, with me is John Denton. What up? Uh, same, if, same as usual, we're going to go through the 10 games we've played over the last 7 days from 10 to 1. Games we played the least at 10, games we played the most at 1. Um, that's it, go ahead, John, shoot. Uh, okay, before I start, I'm in a hotel uh, on work, so if the quality is a bit sketchy, apologies. But yeah, straight into it. Uh, number 10 is Retro City Rampage on PlayStation Vita. Uh, barely touched it. Literally just waiting for, for you in this podcast. Just got uh, a code for it, so it started. Um, it looks cool, though. Kind of this garish, old-school, top-down GTA-style thing with a ton of old-school game references. Um, just seems like something that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, it's split people down the middle, hasn't it? Apparently the charm wears off quite quickly. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I can also see that potentially. But yeah, I'm up for playing more of it. Yeah, no, I need to check, check that out as well. Um, uh, okay, my number 10 is NRA Practice Range on the iPhone. Oh, no way. <laughs> oh, did you see it all in the press today? Yeah, I saw, uh, saw you uh, on Tuesday, yeah. Yeah. On Monday um, or whatever. Yeah, it's, I typed NRA, NRA into the App Store and there are several NRA apps. Most of them are just contain facts about the NRA, but this is the only one that I could see that's actually a game. Um it's it's as crap as you think. It's 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 faulty as well. I played it for about ten fifteen minutes and it crashed on me four or five times. Um, yeah, it's just you're either at a shooting range or you're clay pigeon shooting outside. It's that's about it. It's like it's 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 a barely adequate first person shooter. With the, the gyroscopic controls are really good. If you try to use the analog, you know, use your thumbs, it just basically doesn't work. It's laggy. It's generally unresponsive, and there's a massive dead zone on the screen where just just basically next to where you tap to shoot. So a lot of the times you don't even shoot. I mean, it's 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 absolutely crap. The only thing that's of any interest, it's not even interesting. In the when you're loading, the loading screen contains very, very upbeat and positive facts about the NRA, like how many kids have been educated about gun safety, how many uh, sort of state officials and police have been educated about gun safety, and you know all that stuff. Uh, it, it's crap. Uh, yeah, it sounds crap. It's crap. Yeah, I'm never play that. Uh, not for any political reasons, or this ain't a podcast for that. But it just yeah, it sounded rubbish. Look rubbish. Yep. Uh, so my number nine is I, is Kentucky Route Zero. I spoke to uh, our listener Paul on Twitter, and I've read so much about it this week that I, I thought maybe I was a little bit too harsh. So I listened back, and I was quite harsh on it last week. I definitely still don't think it's the game for me. I, I still really like the style, the music. I still want to like it, and I think that's why I've gone back in because so much of it is up my street. But I just can't hack a game that's that plodding. And apparently the developers are sort of say, give in to the boredom and let that become part of the tone. And I'm just like, Bleh. you know, I can't buy that. I'm sorry. I, I get what you're saying, but I, I'm not sure. But, I, I mean, it's only it's only about an hour, ten minutes long, so I'll probably get to the end of the episode again and, and see what I think. Because when I played it before most critics, I think, and then all the articles came out the next couple of days, and I thought they'd be split down the middle or at least sort of 60-40 positive, but it's been unanimous raving positivity and then just me in a corner <laughs> moaning so I thought um, maybe I'll give it another go but I still kind of stand by what I said probably but maybe I was a little harsh okay are you going to play the subsequent episodes well that's I might do one more quite expensive but I'll play, I don't know I don't know when when so many people write so eloquently about something it does make you think maybe maybe I'm the wrong one yeah fair point uh, yeah, I will have a look at it at some point when I have the facilities to do so. Okay, uh, my number nine is uh, a game called Cars Shooting at Aliens on the Xbox 360. Um, it's an indie game and it's by a, a, a company called Zebra Games. I didn't know anything about them at all. Um, but it's I think it's done by a parent or a relative of some very young kids because the input of the children is massive. Uh, all of the art's done by very young children. Um, it's uh, there's at the beginning they talk to you, 
Uh, it's incredibly charming, basically. But the game itself is... You're just a car going from left to right, sh using the left analogue stick to drive, the right analogue stick to shoot, and you shoot your aliens above you, ride over hills and stuff. The physics are... They're not terrible as as much as they just... I've never seen anything like it. Trying to keep control of that vehicle is incredibly difficult because it just rolled... The, the front tyres sort of move out of sync with each other and it tumbles upside down. So it's it's actually quite okay. frustrating. It's quite frustrating at first. Um, but it's it's the game's not broken. It works within its own confines. So actually, if you spend enough time with it, you, you'll master it. It's very simple, but surprisingly uh, unusual. And then I got to the second level... And to my surprise, it's actually completely different. There's a different vehicle that handles completely differently. It's like it gets loads of air and jumps really high. It's the same game, but it's yeah, the the, the way the car handles completely changes it. And from what I can gather, each level I think there's six or seven has a um, uh, has a different different car, different physics and stuff. And for, you know, it's quite a lot of effort to have gone to for something that seems so sort of lo-fi and uh, yeah. Uh, Sort of, sort of simplistic. It's actually, yeah, impressed for what it is. If you, you should definitely have a look at the. Uh, it's not something anyone's going to play, but if you have kids, it's uh, it's something that will uh, will appeal probably. And there's a kind of Mr. Scruff kind of music that they they sell on their website, which is uh, which is quite cool. So yeah, surprising okay. really. It sounds alright. Yeah, it's worth a look if you've got kids, especially because there's something very. I don't know, kids respond to that because there's a lot of talk these kids trying not to laugh and explaining the rules of the world and stuff and all the levels are called horrible, uh, they're called like scary, spooky house and stuff like that. Uh, so there's a lot, the, the kids' involvement's actually quite significant. But yeah, have a look, if, maybe. Yeah, that does sound right. What was it called again? Cars Shooting at Aliens. Ah, okay. Uh, Genuine. Yeah, that sounds all right, actually. Well, have a look. Uh, my number eight is a game called Gish. Um... After playing a hell of a lot more Binding of Isaac, which I'll talk again briefly about later, I decided to see if I could track down all of Edmund McMillan's games. Um, and his first one, or the first one of note anyway, was Gish, which is a kind of puzzle platformer where you play a ball of tar and it can stick to some surfaces and make itself heavy. Um, it's very clever. I can see why it won awards back in, I think it was 2005 it came out. Um, it's stuff that you've seen done better elsewhere now. But that's seven, almost sort of seven, eight years old. It, it's very cool. A lot of the um, the physics was nicked basically for sound shapes on the Vita, which I had no idea about. And um, yeah, you could just see the guy is some sort of design genius, really. That that was something he came out with that long ago on no money. So um, yeah, I mean, it's not. It's more like um, I just wanted to see what he was doing rather than actually going to play it through. But uh, yeah, I've also bought a. They did a Steam collection for like two quid of a bunch more of his games, so I'm going to check them out as well. But um, yeah, it's cool. He's good. Uh, did you play that on? Was that an iOS? Uh, no, it's all on the Mac. Okay. What was it called? Gash? Gish. Gish. Um, it's uh, like a Radiohead style pay what you want okay. sort of deal. And it's how old? This is an old game of his. Seven, six, seven years oh, wow. old. Okay. But um, I just wanted to see his back catalogue. Yeah, fair enough. What did you pay for it? Uh, quid. Okay, that's fair enough, I suppose. Yeah, he's alright. He's got Meat Boy. Yeah, he'll be alright. Yeah, true that. Uh, okay. Um, okay, my number eight is a game called Arrow in the Knee on the Xbox 360. This is some sort of horrible Skyrim thing. It, uh, that's what it's meant to be. Although the quote is Arrow to the Knee, isn't it? So it even fucks yes. that up. Uh, no, against all odds, this is a very, very good game. It's a very good, very polished tower defence game. I mean, no, right. apparently, by, by the looks of it, made by a very small team if not one guy on his own uh, yeah it's sort of familiar to anyone there's a guy on the left uh, a guy defending his um, castle it involves very precise thumbstick aim so you fire these arrows down at the the, the, uh, the guys as they progress um, but you get bonus points for hitting them in the knee and sometimes you have to hold down for a power shot um, but the, uh, I only played the trial, but I played it twice. And the further I got the second time, I, ideas just keep coming. Ninjas start arriving, that they come right up to the tower, and you have to hit them only when they come up next to you. This huge dragon comes up, and you have to buy these upgrades. So you have ice arrows to stop his fireballs destroying the castle. Uh, and you have to deal with that whilst also dealing with the guys on the ground. Uh, there's local co-op and multiplayer, although I don't know how those work. Um, there's not a new idea in it. It's there's nothing original essentially, but it's incredibly enjoyable and polished for such a sort of lo-fi game. And it's 80, 80 Microsoft points. So um, if you're a real sucker for tower defence, then um, have a look. 
Uh, yeah, that sounds good, man. Uh, sounds like you've had a, uh, a decent run on indie games this week. The two I played this week have been actually uh, a bit much better than expected. But at first, both of them, I was like, oh no. And they both surprised me quite a bit. So yeah, both of those are definitely worth looking at for, for definite. Yeah. Yeah, they were, I was about to ask you what it's called, but obviously Arrow and the Knee. Genuinely. Um, yeah, that sounds all right. It's all right. Hmm. Yeah, they do sound all right. I should maybe give it a go myself. Well, I did do that Shark Attack game once, didn't I? So I'm representing as well. Uh, number seven for me is Civilization V, um, a game that I bought on the Steam sale. I can see why, why it happens for Fiverr. Uh, I played Civilization Four for review on Games TM years ago, and I didn't have a fucking clue what I was doing. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I was probably not the right person to review it, but it wasn't my decision. Um, so, with that in mind, I, I bought this, and um, it just seems like more of the same, but slightly slicker. Um, I don't know what seventy percent of the stuff that's going on means, but it, build a build a civilization, build a town. It gets bigger and bigger. Send your little men out across the map. I'm talking about everyone knows what civilization is, but um, have wars. It's just fucking brilliant, really. It's other people like it a lot more than me, but I certainly see the appeal and I do enjoy it. And um, yeah, it's just a nice game to have when you've got a bit of downtime, want a bit of something, something thoughtful that doesn't really require any dexterity or speed or adrenaline or anything like that. Um, or maybe I'm just getting old. Yeah. No. To be honest, that's uh, when did that come out? Five. Um, Last year, maybe 2011. Okay, that sounds about right. I'm gonna say 11. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, or was it not? No, there was some expansion pack last year. But yeah, we, I reviewed that when it came out, and I don't have a PC, so I had to use a PC at work. And I was there. It, it, it really got me. So I, I'm, I'm yeah. kind of glad it wasn't in my house because I stayed so late. I think I barely made the last train home. I got, I mean, really got its hooks in. Um, but yeah, basically a masterpiece. That. Yeah, I mean, those guys at Fraxis are just there's something else. Yeah. Um, that much is true. Um, a fiver, that's a fucking steal. Um, yeah, four ninety five. in fact. Uh, okay, my number seven uh, <clears throat> should actually have been my number ten. I don't know why it's number seven, so I won't drag on about it. It's called Joe Cable, um, and it's on iOS. <laughs> um, I, I, went, I, I, I went into the App Store looking for Joe Danger, the iOS version. I was of actually going to say that as a joke, but that is actually what happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I looked at Joe Danger, and bearing in mind I didn't really warm to the sequel that was out that I played fairly recently, and it was two quid. I mean, I know it's it's mm. a slick game, but I don't think I'd get two quid's worth of uh, play out of it. I just found this other thing called Joe Cable, which was free, but you can buy an upgraded version. Uh, it looks like a BBC animated kids TV program from like the 70s or the 80s, just very simple animation. Right. It's about a guy who rep- repairs telephone cables, and the game's... Good on him. Out, sorry? Good on him. Yeah, yeah, fair play to the guy. Um, and basically the game is incredibly simple. You you have an accident, which is sort of uh, depicted in like a comic book panel. You fall and you slide down telephone cables and you have to jump from cable to cable avoiding obstacles and you tilt the phone to sort of lean your legs and ca- pick up collectibles. Incredibly simple. It's fine. I don't know why. Joey Cable. Sorry? Son of Vince Cable, my boy. <laughs> uh, uh, what, Vince Cable yeah Vin- Vinny C some sort of politician I don't know um, <laughs> yeah. number 6 for me is uh, Mario 3D Land which I played today on the train um, having forgotten that it existed I I thought I'll stick this on and I see if I can get to the end and it turns out I was actually on the second to last level so um, I managed to, to beat Bowser standard stuff and now Tons more stuff's happening, but my 3DS ran out of batteries, as it has the tendency to do, especially on the old 3DS, which is what I got. But um, yeah, it just reminded me how bloody good that game is. We've been playing a lot of the 2D Wii U Mario recently, but this is just, it is a cut above. Um, you can tell that team in uh, wherever they're based, I think they're the Kyoto team who do the Mario Galaxy as well. They're just, there's some damn geniuses over there, man. Yeah, what are they called? The ESD team? What are they called? EAD, I think. Yeah, the guys that make the, it, yeah. the Galaxy. I'm, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's EAD. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's still the best game on the 3DS, I think. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, okay, my number six is Marvel Pinball 3D, also on the 3DS. Um, oh, how's that? Uh, it's, uh, it's it's very good. I mean, I have a very strange relationship with pinball. I don't. I've you know, there's that one on the Xbox 360 that a load of my friends got completely and utterly hooked on. I can't remember what it's called. 
you buy yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, you buy yeah. Ta- like tables for four hundred, and I'm like, why would you buy tables? Just use the same one, or, you know, but without you know, because like, that's how little I understand about pinball video games. And there's something about when I sit down in front of a pinball video game, I'm just like, I could just play a, pi- a real pinball machine, despite the fact that real pinball machines are actually quite hard to find. Um, something yeah. about it seems like a, a, a cop out of a game. I don't know what it is, uh, but anyway, I downloaded this as a free demo on the um, on the 3DS store. Uh, and yeah, it's really good, really slick. It's uh, Marvel, so the two tables you get to look at is Blade and Fantastic Four, and it looks really good in 3D. The characters, uh, there's sort of characters interacting and sort of making wisecracks on the board on the top screen, and uh, yeah, cheesy one-liners and stuff. And the bottom screen, there's um, uh, like a, a replication of those LED uh, scoreboards that always were in the back of uh, pinball machines. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I got hooked briefly. It was, a, it's a, I mean, as far as pinball games go, it seems like a very, very good one. Whether you want to shut out for, I don't know if it's a full price game or whether you can download it for a few pounds or something. But uh, uh, I think there's online leaderboards and stuff like that. Yeah, it was re- very slick. Very uh, looked good. Yeah, man, I, I kind of feel the same way about you as when it comes to pinball games. I had one on the Amiga, like a demo. I can't remember what it was called. It's a famous one. I love that. But ever since then. Yeah, I, I miss the kind of tactility of the pinball table, but I don't even care about that, really. Yeah, uh, I mean... But, um, it's, it's, people do love it. Yeah, it's weird, but for, I see friends of mine, when a new table comes out on whatever that, that pinball game is, they're on it for, like, days, and I'm just like, how? How? Yeah. But yeah, that's, you know, I, as far as those games go, this looks like a very good uh, a very good one. Cool. I might check that out if it's a, it's a free demo. Freebie, yeah. Um, sticking with the 3DS, strangely, uh, my number five is a game called Tokyo Crash Mobs. Have you heard of this? Tokyo Crash Mobs? No, not at all. It is a F- FMV game about FMV puzzle game where you have to use one of these two girls to fire hipsters at other hipsters to match three, basically. Um, it's fucking weird, <laughs> obviously. Uh, the game itself is is Puzzle Loop. I don't know if you've ever played that. It's basically exactly the same game. Um, it's quite a shallow, uh, basic match three game all about reactions. It's nowhere near as good as a Puzzle Bobble or, or something like that. But um, it's so weird. It's that type of weirdness that only people who play video games their whole lives, especially people of our age, could ever really understand. If you showed that to someone who don't play video games, they'd just think you're on crack and just they'd probably get quite scared. Um but it's the type of weirdness that I, I do gravitate to. But after a while, ultimately, the game, well, fun, isn't really much cop, isn't worth spending a great amount of time with. And it's also slightly mean-spirited just because these people are uh, trying to dress cool. You don't need to kill them. But, um, yeah, it's all right. Um, who developed it? Um, they're called Mitchell, <laughs> but they're Japanese. Strange. Um, I take it it's, it's uh, one of the eShop uh, games. It's not a, a full... A f- yeah, yeah, it's not a full, not a full bow. Okay. All right, that sounds... Uh, yeah, I'll swerve it. It's bloody weird. Uh, it's I do like weird, weird... I like stuff like that, that's completely weird, but, I mean, if it's just a, a, a sort of rip-off of another game, I think I'll probably dodge it. Yeah, it's, but they, sorry, they make that game as well. Oh, right, so, okay. Uh, the, the, it's just their game, but done really weird. Type it, I, I'd YouTube it, because then you get all the weirdness out of the YouTube and a weird... through videos and the girls um, they're not sexy girls they're just women they just need to get to the front of a queue that's what they need to do is that what the, is that what the, the idea is yeah it's, it's people at a cinema queue and you've got all these hipsters running away so you've got to throw out the hipsters to kill them it's a good idea but the game that that wears off after about 10 minutes and then it's just a game okay all right fair enough um uh, also i'm on the 3ds again as well uh, my number five is dead or alive dimensions also another demo um, in short it's good it looks good I can't vouch for the whole game but it looks like it's got quite a few modes and it looks nice but, but funnily enough it, in terms of visuals it demonstrates the 3DS at its best and at its worst um, because it kind of looks like it was developed as if it was for a different platform so there's a lot of right. fast cutting a lot of fast movement a lot of motion blur where the 3D is not emphasised at all and then there's bits I mean, the, it, during the fight, it looks good. And when at the end of the fight, when they sort of pose, like one of their hands will come out of the screen, that looks nice. But there's a bit during a cutscene where there's helicopters ascending. Uh, you know, when the camera's still and capturing something, it looks, you're like, wow, that, uh, I forget sometimes the 3DS is capable of like really impressive stuff. Mm. Um, but with regard to the gameplay, uh, it's it's dead or alive. It's very simple. It's, it's exactly what you'd expect. Um, 
Yeah, it's the only problem is that it, it might as well have been a demo video because although you get to do two modes and fight three or four fights in each, there's no difficulty. So you can't possibly ascertain how how much longevity there is because you can't see how good the AI is because the guy the, your okay. opponents just stand there and take what you're dishing out. So if the game's like that, you're in, you know you're up shit creek. But it's a, it's a real oversight that you can't sort of rack up the the difficulty to see if it's uh, if it's compelling you know in that way because if it's if it's as flat as the ai that i fought against you wouldn't bother a bit getting the game but there's online and stuff um just try not to watch too many of the cutscenes because it will give you a headache apart from when the camera is <laughs> still which is not very uh, not very frequently unfortunately but yeah pr- pr- better than i was expecting yeah i've never minded those games but in fact i used to really like them but um yeah fighting games on handheld uh there's something, yeah. There's something that's not quite right about them, and I think the fact that you just can't play with someone else in the same room. Yeah, I, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, I, I know what you mean, and I had those misgivings about it. But it's the same as uh, uh, the Street Fighter Four port. Very good port yeah. on 3DS, but I, I mean, I, I had a lot of admiration for it, and I thought it was one of the best launch titles, if not the best. But uh, I haven't played it since, and that's all that needs to be uh, said. Yeah, I've still got that in my little 3DS wallet, but it hasn't gone in for a while. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, weirdly, again, number four for me is another 3DS game called Fractured Soul uh, 3D. Um, now, this is a platformer, kind of a 90s Amiga-style platformer. You play as a robot, but the gimmick is um, the game exists in a duality, so each screen is the same thing, right? But you can switch your little robot between screens, and on the other screen, he'll just be uh, an outline. So ever so slightly different things change uh, depending on what screen uh, you're on. So... You know, there'll be platforms on the bottom screen that aren't on the top screen, so you have to quickly switch between to hit the right platforms, or there'll be an enemy on the top screen he's not on the bottom screen, so you switch to the top screen to shoot him. Uh, stuff like that. It's a really neat idea. It doesn't. It, it feels like something that could have been done on the original DS, uh, like a, as a launch title, and it's surprising it hadn't really been done before, but then the more you play it, um, you realise why, because it's... It gets extremely difficult very quickly. The only way to not make it boring, I think, was to ramp up the difficulty. So you're having to do, like, jump, switch, and switch back in the middle of a jump and shoot at the same time, and your brain just cannot handle it. There is, I'm sure, if you have the capacity and the will, you could teach your brain this new way of looking at two screens at once and trying to compute two things at the same time and and get through it, but the game isn't fun enough. And it's so frustrating. I just don't see why anyone would bother, apart from probably the people who made it. So it's a game that I... It's a cool idea. It's nice. I like the style. It's got good music. When the guy dies, the little robot, he sounds like a, an old man. He goes, ah! I don't know why, but <laughs> I rate that. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, it's just way too hard. Like by, by the third mission, it's like fucking snap your 3DS in half, type hard, and it's 30 missions. So... Um, yeah, you'd have to be a fucking crazy person or only ever be able to afford one game and this was the one game you happened to choose. Uh, I'm up for that challenge. It sounds interesting enough that I think I could probably sort of persevere with it if it's... That... I think I think you'd like it more than I do. I think that... Because uh, it, it's kind of in your your world. Twitchy, 2D. Yeah. I think you might like yeah, it. Yeah, I think I might as well. What was it called again? Fractured Soul. And it, hang on a second, is there a demo of this? I think I saw it on the demo. Um, or, or, or it, uh, I think there is. I'm pretty sure there is. Yeah. Either it was a demo or that it was like front of front of the uh, the 3DS store. Yeah. Um, how how much is it's, it? Like? It's a slick game. It, it is a slick game. It's just um, it's too hard. Five quid. I'm actually not sure. I, I I can't remember. I think it's I think it's five ninety nine, but I'm not hundred percent sure. Well, wow. okay. Um. Okay, uh, that sounds interesting. I am going to look into that for, for definite. Um, my number four is Mirror's Edge on the Xbox 360. Um, the absolute, absolute joy that I've felt playing through the opening few hours again has gone completely sour because I've now got to the point where it for- forces you into um, playing it as a first-person shooter, basically. A yeah. really, really dry and finicky and, yeah, a really mediocre first-person shooter. Um I've got to about the. I mean, I've got to the point. I don't know if you remember where you're in that car parking garage and you come out of the back of the van and everyone's got these, you know, heavy machine guns, heavy armor and stuff. And the only way you can sort of get past them is to d- disarm them up close by countering their melee yeah, attack. Bell, yeah. But the, the the window of opportunity is so small with those guys that it's a lot of the time it's blind luck and the um, 
the save points are even more f- far apart later on. So it's just incredibly frustrating. You also die very quickly. I mean, I've got to the point now where I, I haven't decided whether to ditch because I'm basically I'm playing it through on hard, which okay. up until now has been great, and I recommend the, the, playing it on hard. But I've also there's an achievement for doing it on hard, and there's an achievement for um, uh, not shooting anyone. I don't know what to do because I've done it all the way. I mean, I'm in the final act. I mean, I'm not in the final quarter, maybe even the final fifth of the game. But I did that sequence in the car park repeatedly, kept dying, kept dying, kept dying. And I don't know whether to ditch it because I've done it for that long. It's just, it's too, it's too fucking hard. And I yeah. know that what's coming, the finale in that massive glass building with God knows how many goons with machine guns. Oh my God, yeah. That was irritating that when was I was shooting people normal, and I was yeah. playing it on normal. Yeah, so I don't know. I really don't know. It's definitely it's, it's a shame because the the, fir- the opening two thirds of that game are so incredibly good, and now it's all gone a little bit peaked on. But I don't know whether I, 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 I'm going to go back to it before next uh, before we record, so I'll let you know. But uh, I might just have to bail on 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 doing those two. It's not because I want the achievements. I just thought it'd be a neat way to uh, yeah sure to to play the game. But yeah, uh, I'll let you know. Yeah, I actually grabbed it over Christmas for two quid from CEX on PS3. I haven't had a chance to put it on yet, but after you were talking about it the other week. Two quid for Mirror's Edge yeah. is, uh, is wicked. But, um, yeah, even if I only play the first couple of levels for that price, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, indeed. That's oh, me still, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, number three for me is uh, Binding of Isaac. Talked about it a lot last week, so I won't go on about it too much more. Still, um, whenever I get spare 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I- I'll stick it on, see how far I can get. Still haven't finished it. Was very, very close on the train this weekend and uh, pressed the wrong button when I had to change... Uh, uh, I had to change trains, and instead of pressing escape to pause, I pressed space for some reason, which used my ability, which I was saving for the boss. The boss fucked me up. I was absolutely gutted. And then the worst family in England were on the train afterwards. Yeah. Worst family ever. Uh, like eight kids playing their music, shouting, parents getting pissed. Um, so now I have kind of overriding bad memories of Binding of Isaac, but I know it's not the game's fault. Um, I think I might retire my my playtime on it though now, because I want to wait for the... Um, the Xbox 360 version, the Edmund McMillan keeps banging on about it on Twitter. That's not fair, he doesn't. He just mentions it every now and again. <laughs> and I know it's going to be amazing. So, um, yeah, I don't want to over, over Isaac myself. Um, yeah, don't overdose on Isaac. But w- what are they going to charge for it? 800? Is it a 1200 kind of game? Yeah. Uh, I, I, Meat Boy is 800, so I reckon this will probably be 800, but it's, it's definitely a 1200 game. Yeah, it's funny because I think that you can attribute a lot of success to games that sort of didn't go overboard and charge 1200 when they could have done yeah, and I, I think it'll probably be 800 well that's all good I hope so too although if it's, if it's worth 1200 then that's that's a completely different matter yeah I mean it's it's the equivalent price of 800 on and on PC and it launched at that price so I can't see them going over I suppose it depends on how much work's gone into the port though I guess yeah um, uh, we'll, we'll see but I, I, I would predict 800 yeah okay well I look forward to that as well um I was gonna try. I was gonna try the the, the the current version, but I think I'll wait for the console one as well. I would. I would. Um, uh, okay, my number three is my health coach. Colon stop smoking with Alan Carr. And before you ask, not that Alan Carr, the guy who wrote the very famous uh, book on how to quit smoking. Um, I end. Uh, this is one of those things where. I, 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 have you ever been in a pound shop? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have. Not for a while, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I went in one years ago, but there's not really any near where I live. So I, I was back in Brighton, and uh, we were in town, and I was like, oh, a pound shop. And I walked in, there's actual, there's actual stuff there. I, I always picture there being, like, toothbrushes and fucking dish gloss, and that's it. Mm. But there's all sorts of stuff. Food and fucking anything. But anyway, there was, there was CDs, uh, DVDs, some great DVDs I wish I bought. Stuff you didn't know existed, starring people you thought were dead. And uh, <laughs> I, I wish I bought some of those. But... Um, for one pound, me and my girlfriend each bought my health coach stop smoking with Alan Carr. It's a very, very weird game um, because what's it on? Uh, it's on the 3DS. Um, it's. Uh, have, I take it you've never read that Alan Carr book. No, thankfully I, I managed to give it up um, just by yelling at a mutual friend of ours for about two weeks. But <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to go down the book route. Uh, yeah, I did. I did read it. It was very, very smart. Um, and uh, it was it was brazenly manipulative, but it was never condescending. And the right. problem with this game is it's just incredibly condescending. I, mean, I don't know what the Alan Carr's uh, into. You know, I don't know what his involvement was, but 
you start the game and it asks you some really cool, you know, well, I say cool, but it gives you some really neat things that, um, you know, it asks when you started smoking, how many you smoke, uh, you know, all this stuff. And then it tells you how many cigarettes you've smoked approximately and how many you would have smoked by the time you die and all this sort of pretty cool stuff, you know, and it makes you sign this contract saying you're going to stick to the plan and you you know, you write your signature on the screen. So it's, it's quite nice like that. Um, but then they start, they they it, it's it's very sort of matter of fact until after you've done that that uh, signed your name, and then it says, um, "Oh, who's that down below?" And then you see a little cigarette butt with a face wandering around the bottom screen. And they go, "Oh, it's the nicotine monster." Tap the nicotine monster, and you're just like, "What the fuck is this?" All of the stuff in the book, you know, it, it never it was never you know it never stooped to levels like this. It's just kind of yeah. it condescending and a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. It, it kind of takes everything that the book did, and it, it, this is not. It, it, if I was Alan Carr, I wouldn't. They must have offered him a lot of money because it has none. None of the techniques he uses are used in the game. You play these little. It gives you these facts about. Uh, you know, it says you know the desire to uh, smoke is much like the desire that this little um, potholer feels when he's going after diamonds. Then you play a game where you're this potholer going after diamonds dragging him along, picking diamonds up from this mine, and then afterwards it'll say, so, do you understand that your desire for cigarettes is much like potholer man's desire for diamonds? Click yes, or redo the, the lesson. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's just fucking... And then you, you gradually... It's nothing like that. No, it's not. I mean, it's... it's I mean, it's. A, I'd be offended if I was Alan Carr, and I wouldn't put my name to it at all. Um, the only... I mean, in between each level, there's testimonials uh, by people and stuff like that. It's twee. You build your way up this graph, and you are depicted as a guy uh, in a little hot air balloon, and the music's like upbeat, sort of guitar-y stuff that you might see in a really, really terrible episode of Friends when there's a really <laughs> happy ending. Um, I, 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 I'm sure that nobody has ever... This has never helped anybody quit smoking, ever. So I'm sure that that's uh, uh, I'm sure that, yeah I, I'm a hundred percent certain of that. But so uh, yeah, it might have started people potholing though. So yeah, something's good. Yeah, who knew there were so many diamonds down there? Um, yeah, that sounds amazing. That sounds like a really good idea. Yeah, uh, the the other thing about it is that technically it's completely ham fisted. There's no it's it's there's no there are save points, but it doesn't. There's no main menu. You can't go back to a main menu. You can't stop. You're meant to sit there and just sort of read it as if it was a book, but. If you stop at the wrong point, it won't save. And as, you, as soon as you start the game again, it just jumps you back into the game. There is no menu, which is a little bit uh, a little bit weird. But yeah, it's uh, pretty fucking ropey, really. Yeah, if I was Alan Carr, I wouldn't endorse or put my name to a product where you control it using a cigarette-length stylus either. But... Oh yeah, I never thought about that. I wonder if they touch upon that later on. And that's I mean that's the other thing. There's no replay value. That you're supposed to finish it and stop smoking so but yeah. uh yeah in terms of replay value you've got none and the games are rubbish it's not really a yeah. game they're shoehorned into this sort of a pro- imagine if a, a five-year-old approximated the book it's i mean it's just a mystery a quid though yeah i mean yeah a quid i can't i can't yeah there you go a pound yeah good old alan carr stick to chatty man <laughs> yeah my number two is uh, God of War Ascension, the the beta. Um, actually, put out a video on our YouTube channel um, showing me getting duffed up and then smashing up some fools in a match, uh, four player free fall match. Um, yeah, it's it's really good. It's really good fun. It feels fresh because it's not a shooter. You know, all the tactile multiplayer stuff in games are either uh, competitive multiplayer shooters or cooperative multiplayer shooters. So that's why I'm. That's why I get annoyed with them. But this, even though when it was announced, I was like, oh, God of War doesn't need multiplayer. You start playing it, and it's like, actually, this is just like kind of Power Stone, but with God of War controls and combos. Um, they've done some clever stuff to to uh, compensate for any potential latency, like the parry window is a lot bigger, and um, uh, just other stuff with the the way the magic works and and things like that. And the um, But there was no latency at all. It was really nice. And, yeah, just, you know, hacking people up with that, high level of combat you know it's not it's not bayonetta dmc but it is only sort of one level below that on god of war it is it is very good um and there's loads of fun there's the the yeah there's a free for all mode then there's a team um 
like domination type mode, which is which is cool with the big cyclops is smashing the scenery. And then there's capture the flag mode, which is great because every time you get the flag, you know, in God of War, and you have to do anything, you have to like mash the button, and it really makes you feel like you're working for it. Yeah. So you sort of yanking the the flag out the ground, and um, yeah, everything about it's cool. It's been really nasty, gutting people, and they're holding their intestines in their hands. Um, people say it's too violent, but I think it suits. I've always thought it suited the theme of. You know, uh, swords and sandals and gods and titans, and um, obviously it looks it looks amazing as well. Um, one of those PS3 games that's PS3 only, and those games do look um, they look the business. So um, yeah, it's got me pumped about Ascension overall. Um, I was kind of a bit done with God of War after three. I thought three um, ended in a bit of a damp script for that series, and two was one of my favourite games ever. And but now uh, after that, um, yeah, oh yeah, I love God of War. I love the pomp and uh, nonsense of it all. Yeah, um, it's, it'll be interesting to see how the development of the multiplayer side has hindered or not hindered the the single player because those. Yeah, it, the, it, I still think there'll be the single player will still be massive. It's still developed by the, the same team, right? Yeah, and uh, I think God of War Three was the biggest selling of the, all of them, so I think they've got they've got the cash. Um, I only played the first two uh, sort of retrospectively, so I played them on the HD remixes. Um, okay. So I always preferred three. I was, I still think three was my favourite. Um, but yeah, that's when is it out? Um, March, mid March. Oh, soon. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, and it's not. I don't think it'll be a multiplayer that you play for hours and hours and hours and hours like a Battlefield or, or a COD. But you know, if you get a couple of weekends out of it, you know, all good. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, okay, my number two is Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge on the Nintendo Wii U. Um, I'll talk about a bit, you know, I've, I've spoken about Ninja Gaiden 3 many times, and I'm one of the few people or who, who really, really liked uh, the original Ninja Gaiden 3. It wasn't a Ninja Gaiden game, and it was mindless and stupid, um, but I liked it. It was, it was old fashioned, and it wanted to do something, it did it, and uh, yeah, I, I, I did enjoy it quite a bit, as I've said before. Um, Putting on the uh, Razor's Edge on the Nintendo Wii U, I completely different straight away. I noticed the differences immediately. I mean, it was difficult from the off. Whereas the first one, the combat in the first one was kind of like one of those turkey shoots that you get thrown into in like Gears of War or Call of Duty, where you're given, you're behind this ridiculously powerful weapon and you just basically mow down people endlessly. You know, for well, not endlessly for you know five or six minutes, yeah. and it's you know you're never in any danger. You rarely die. It's just it's just the thrill of that sort of just carnage, creating carnage. Basically, that's what the combat was in the uh, original Ninja Game Three. Here, it's much more like you know the, the first two Ninja Gaiden games, especially, um, and it's difficult straight away. Not as difficult as they were, but yeah. I mean, you've played this, haven't you? Yeah, I have. I've played loads of it. Um, Oh, you never played the original. You never played the the 360 and the PS3. No, I never played Ninja Gaiden 3, the original. If that, yeah, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Straight away, I noticed that um, it was immediately difficult. I came close to dying almost immediately because I thought it was just going to be a sort of mindless hack and slash, and it's not. It's a, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that. Um, there's mild slowdown. Um, it's barely noticeable and it's intermittent, but it is there. Um, the long-winded QTE sections are gone. They were, I mean, they were basically cutscenes that you sort of, uh, you know, with QTE prompts that were completely pointless. Right. And I'm glad to see the back of them, although. There's one bit at the end of the first battle that you get into where uh, when, you, when you're in London at the beginning and mm-hmm. you pace towards this guy, one of these thugs, and he pleads for his life and he starts talking about his family and you just keep pacing towards him. And when you get up to him, I remember at the time I thought, it's going to ask me, do I kill him or do I not? And then it doesn't give you the option, you just have to kill him. And at the time I thought, that's actually quite neat. It made me think I was going to be given a choice and then you realise, of course he'd kill him. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that's part of the character. Um, yeah, there are collectibles now, and you can use them to unlock different weapons, which you couldn't do at all. You know, neither of those things were in the uh, the original. I was a bit disappointed by how the, the I mean, because the gamepad is just basically an options screen on the pad. Yeah, uh, there's not. You know, you're not going to find anything particularly exciting about that. Um, yeah, I I didn't test actually. Can you play the whole thing on on the on the gamepad instead of? You can. Oh, you can. You go into the options, and you can switch. Um, it's a little bit too dark on the gamepad. Um, if you whack the brightness right up, it's okay, but it's um, it's a bit fast and a bit dark. But it's, you know you can do it, so that's always cool. Yeah, um, 
Yeah, it's. I mean, I actually played it for for a brief period with the Pro Controller, and I think that's the way to play it. If you've got a, a Pro Controller for the Wii U, uh, you, you can live without the upgrade stuff, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it it felt you know much more immediate using the, using the Pro Controller. Um, the, Definitely. The fact that you can upgrade uh, the special attacks now. I mean, when you started Ninja Gaiden Three, when you first filmed your special meter, you did that ridiculously huge thing with the big killer dragon, which just decimated everything. Which made, I mean, even on hard mode, it was laughable because you could just completely decimate a whole area with the touch of a button, and those things replenish really quickly. Here, that meter replenishes uh, very slowly, and you can. It takes a bit of time to upgrade those special attacks to get to that level. Um, and also, there's new weapons, so you can have. Uh, you're not just restricted to just the sword. Another thing that wasn't in the original. Um, as far as that, you know, it's difficult. I mean, I think if you're a fan of the original Ninja Game games, this is definitely the version to get. Um, well, no, almost certainly, yeah. I mean, although I like Ninja Game 3, this is a much more sophisticated game. It's a lot more difficult. It's a, there's a lot more to it uh, with all the upgrades and stuff. That It's a more substantial experience, and it does feel more, you know, yeah, substantial. That's, that, that's what I mean. I mean, um, it, it, you'll probably still get annoyed if you've been waiting to sort of catch up with this Uh uh, if you're a fan of the series, because you know Ryu Hayabusa still talks way too much, and he still has a ridiculous relationship with a little child, which didn't need mm. to be in there. Um, but yeah, is it better on the Wii U? I think probably yeah. I think almost certainly. As much as I enjoyed the original, that was a mindless, willfully stupid game. Whereas this is a lot more to it, and uh, the fact that they've listened to the fans is uh, is uh, yeah admirable. I think. Yeah, I- I'd say definitely better on Wii U and. Uh... You know that that core combat is still good. Um, it does basically hark back to the first two games. There are a few problems with balance. I found um, the difficulty is a bit skewed when it comes to the boss fights, and uh, at points you're getting spammed by rocket launcher guys up above, which is pain in the ass. But also on Wii U, there are there's bonus content. You've got a whole new character with new levels. Um, Ayane from Dead or Alive's in there as well, isn't she? And um, she's she's a pretty cool character. I like her moves. Uh, the levels she stars in uh, look like they've been knocked together in about five minutes, but it doesn't really matter what the backgrounds look like in a game like that. Um, and also, there's uh, limb rending. You can cut all the limbs off in the Wii U version, which you can't in the others, which who'd have ever thought that about a Nintendo game years ago? Yeah. Uh, wow, yeah, no, I mean, I think I, I have to concede that this is definitely the version to get. Um, and solid. Uh, on that basis, I think it's a solid solid action game for the Wii U. Although, having said that, if you are, are, you want something of this ilk and you also have access to you know the PlayStation and the Xbox 360, get DMC. Yes, indeed. Which happens to be my number one. Oh, fair enough. DMC Devil May Cry. Um, as I said last week, even though it was my number one last week, I actually played it um, probably a month before for, for a review. Um, so it's a, this was my opportunity to go back into it properly. And um, doing it on the on hard and um, just loving it again. Um, looking forward to just literally getting through to the end of it on hard and then restarting it again on on Son of Sparta mode. Um, put up a video from my review build of uh, Dante with white hair, uh, just so um, just to show how, as much as anything, just to show how silly the whole argument is. I know other people are more upset about the fact it's not 60 frames per second. Um, I said this last week. The super super hardcore. DMC Devil May Cry fans who replay them over and over and over again and know those games intricately. If they say, if you're telling me that those games are better, okay, I'm not. How how can I argue with that? You know, I've played all the DMCs uh, a lot, but you know, I'm not going to argue with the Black Belt and Devil May Cry. That's fine. And you know, we're perhaps not talking to you. We're talking to standard action game fans who've probably played them all, enjoyed them, and uh, and this is. I, I'm still going to say it again. I still think it's the best one. Um, I think there are parts of three which are better, um, boss fights and uh, things, which is just marvelous about three. But there's also a lot of wandering around doing a load of bullshit in uh, the early Devil May Cry games, which there isn't in this. It's just all all action, all movement. The rules get broken all the time. Uh, so slick. The music's amazing, and uh, just go and buy it. Uh, a lot of people have also said that they've got a problem with um, the fact that combos aren't broken if you're out of combat for too long, uh, which I never thought was much of a problem. Have you? I mean, uh, th- that's the case, isn't it? If you if you step away from combat for too long, you you lose you don't lose a, a multiply. Whereas in previous games, you did. You had to constantly be in the action, otherwise it would uh, it would uh, deplete. 
Yeah, that's that, that's definitely a stylistic choice that they've made. But um, yeah, that that's one of those ones where if that's a real problem, a real problem for the black belts out there, then then fine. You know, I'm not going to argue with you. That's that's up to you. And if that if that spoils your enjoyment of the game, then I just that's just a real shame as far as I'm concerned because it certainly didn't spoil my enjoyment of the game. I noticed it. I also noticed it was more about not getting hit, which um, as you start playing on Son of Spider mode. And the fact that some of the high difficulty levels are based around not getting hit um, just shows a slight shift in style. You know, this is the fifth one. Um, people seem to think that it's not been developed in conjunction with Capcom and the people that made the previous Devil May Cry, but it has, especially on the combat. You know, it's a, all it's basically a collaborative effort, and all the styly stuff, all Ninja Theory, as far as I can work out. But um, if you think that Capcom just threw it over to Cambridge over here and just let them get on with it, they didn't. And it's madness to think that. If you need the 60 frames per second as well and you've got a PC, uh, the PC version can run up to 200 frames a second apparently and obviously you can play on a pad and it's going to look beautiful. So that, that's, that'll be the version as is so often the case at the moment. But um, it didn't bother me one one iota. I noticed that it wasn't as smooth as a Bayonetta or a, or a DMC, but it didn't matter. The, it just didn't matter at all. The, the combos and combat was superb. Yeah, I mean, if I was writing for a magazine, I'd get. I, I almost certainly, if you're giving that game a ten out of ten, um, I was. I was er- erring towards ten at, at points in my review. It's a percentage review, so it would be ninety five plus. But um, I was, yeah, I was leaning towards that. There was a slight dip. I mean, the slightest dip in the the final act, I'd say, and the last boss wasn't quite as good as I thought it could have been, and wasn't as good as some of the previous bosses. So it just slipped under for those reasons. But you know that. When you the the very small reasons. Yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't played it this week, but uh, I am going to. Yeah, it'll be it'll be here for for quite some time. Because what is Son of Star- Spider mode? Is that actually a harder difficulty? Yeah, that's after you you unlock it when you finish the game, and it's remixed enemies. So you're getting the badass enemies straight off the bat. The, every combat encounter is probably two or three times longer, and um, you go into it with all your weapons and all your upgrades. Oh, so nice. Even though that makes some of the cutscenes not make any sense, it doesn't matter. Um, Straight away, within the second fight, you know, there's a big ruck after you run over the the, the uh, caravans or whatever, the, the trailers that fall in the sea, then there's just a ruck on the pier. Yeah. That ruck on Son of Spider mode is properly hard. You're getting smashed from the air, smashed from the ground, there's chainsaw guys straight away. It's proper Devil May Cry, and it's really, really satisfying. You need, you need to pull everything together, really be paying attention to every single thing, all the audio cues, the visual cues of when you're about to get hit. Love it. Okay, yeah, I can't wait. For, I can't wait to do it on that setting at all. That feels like where the game begins, really. Yeah. Okay, sweet, sweet. So, what? That was your number one, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. My number one is Anarchy Reigns on the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, also available on the PlayStation Three. Um, I take it you haven't played this yet. Do you know what? I've been trying to buy it. I went to Asda in Bournemouth, didn't have it. Just been to H and V in Guildford, where I am right now. No. Nope. Uh, don't have it there either. Um, I'm going to order it online, but yeah, I was hoping just to be able to nip into shop, try and support retail, but can't. Yeah, actually, I, I managed to get it in a shop. I got it in game on on Friday morning, uh, and they seem to have loads of copies at the game in Brighton. But uh, yeah, whatever. The, yeah, um, um, it's this is this is a difficult one because I'm such a huge fan of platinum, and uh, I almost paid eighty pounds, I think, a few months ago when I found out that this you could play the three hundred and sixty uh, version uh, region free over here, the Japanese version. Mm. Um, it's ve- I'll, I'll say it's good. It threatens to become very good repeatedly, but I'm glad I didn't pay eighty pounds for it. Sure, um, it's a fun. It's a very very funny game. I mean, I think that it's the it's the by far the least slick. Um, in terms of visuals and just the general flow of uh, of combat uh, that Platinum have ever made. I mean, I think if I if I stuck on uh, Mad World and put it in the Wii U with the slight upscaling that that that, that entails, it would still be a better looking game than this. This is an ugly game. I mean, it looks cheap right. and quite quite nasty at certain points. Have you seen it running? Uh, yeah, I've seen some footage of it. I still can't wrap my head around what it is. Yeah, it's difficult to explain. Uh, just going back to the visuals for a moment. I mean, sorry, uh, it's there's there, there's slowdown at, at certain junctures. There's pop up. There's jagged edges galore, and it look and there's a there's that kind of Nintendo sixty four haze over it. So it looks kind of, 
you know, it just it looks like a hell of a cheap game. And when you know Platinum are known for these incredibly slick, incredibly good looking uh, uh, games, this is uh, th- that took me by surprise because I'd kept away from it. I hadn't seen it running or, or anything like that. Uh, basically, it's a very, very I'll say mindless. There's a little bit more to it, but it's it's a brawler basically. You start mm. off. You can either play as one of two characters, either um, Max from uh, and uh, from Mad World, or this other character. Oh, I can't believe I've forgotten his name. Um, but the the game's broadly the same either way, and it's it's actually quite it, the the structure of the game involves a lot of grinding. You have to get into all these fights, build up your points, and once you've got your points to a certain level, you can go and do a campaign mission. Um, I'm pretty sure did, didn't um, Mad World that had a similar kind of structure, didn't it? It sounds like Mad World, yeah. Yeah, it's um, the the only difference between this and Mad World is that um, there's not you don't get loads of points for sort of flair, you know that you'd use the environment. Mm. I mean, you still use the environment. You pick up cars and throw them, and you pick up signposts and just sort of jam them through people's heads and stuff. It's not particularly gory, and um, it, I, it, it's difficult because it's. It, I mean, I say it's mindless, and it, it it kind of is. There's there's special moves you can do and stuff, and you can utilize the environment, but. You get swarmed by enemies. There's not a lot of sort of tactics you can employ because the camera doesn't really allow it. Um, but it's it's a game that every single time I've played it, I found myself wanting more of it. There's something incredibly in, just Moorish about combat. This, you're this big lunk-headed guy, and you just it's meaty. You, there's right. something so satisfying about just fucking running into a herd of people and just bashing the shit out of them. Um, but the the fact that you grind for a bit and then you have to go to another. You go to a campaign mission, and that involves a lot of grinding, normally followed by a boss. I mean, it, it's really difficult because there is something about it um, that's really, really sort of engaging. And I, the, uh, as I said, I've played it four times on four different sessions for, for several hours each time. And every time, I mean, there's, there's been times when I haven't been playing it, I'm like, I really fancy playing that. Because it does offer something that you don't quite get. I mean, I was expecting perfection because that's what Platinum deals in. And it's not perfect, um, and that's sort of highlighted best by the multiplayer because in many ways this is supposed to be a multiplayer game but you have to take it as kind of a, a Super Smash Brothers melee it, you basically can't worry too much about winning because mm. you get I mean the, I mean when when combat's one on one it's really, really I mean you can get really sucked into it but most of the game types and I think I'm pretty sure there's 12 or more game types um You'll be having a one-on-one fight with someone, and then someone will, someone else will steam into both of you, and probably steal your kill as well, which is fantastically irritating. And that's basically—it's just—it's just a scrum, and there's not a lot of yeah. tactics you can employ. You just—you just have to just sort of enjoy it as a sort of mad party game. Although, having said that, the best multiplayer, the best game type I had was on Capture the Flag, um, because. You know what? I don't even know quite why it works because you think that having an objective would be the most irritating thing, but there was something very funny about just getting the flag and then just getting pummeled by like three guys at the same time. And you know, there's all these uh, jumps. You know, it, it, it's silly. It, the the, the capture yeah. the flag mate is just just so stupid because the other the other ones are quite sort of you know it's it's fighting. It's in here. Go ahead. Whereas capture the flag, you're flying around the environments and there's three teams and the flag spawns. I think at random, but possibly at one point. But it's just there's something. There's, it's like a Looney Tunes cartoon. You, it sounds quite it's, fun. It, fun is the wrong word. Funny, definitely. But right. if you want to, if you actually sit down and say, "I want to try and win this match," you'll ju- don't hurt yourself. Okay. Um, and then you know, if you buy it, if you bought it new, you have a code for two. Uh, two new different modes. One of them's uh, dogfight, which you can hijack vehicles in the campaign, and this basically is you're, you're fighting as choppers in the sky. Uh, it's okay. It's quite fun. It's it's a, it's a sort of throwaway thing. The other free uh, uh, mode that you get with the with the download code is Mad Survivor, which is basically three player horde, which is for some reason is nowhere near as sort of disposable as you think. Because horde is in everything, and I don't. Didn't think I ever wanted to play a Horde knockoff ever again. But Horde in this, uh, three of you, you have to be strategic because if all three of you die, you have a sort of 10, 15 second window. And if you're all dead during it, that's it. Uh, and it's mad and it's crazy. Um, that's that. Actually, the, the two, well, Dogfight, less so. But Mad Survival is one of the sort of, along with Capture the Flames, one of the best things about the multiplayer. As I, okay. as I said, though, that 
the, the, the multitude of different options in multiplayer, the different game types. Trying to find... I mean, when I uh, went into Dogfight, which you think everyone would be playing because everyone bought it new if they're playing it now, um, it, it, I had to sit in the lobby for 20 minutes. And the same happened with uh, Mad Survival. It, unless you go to Quick Match and just take whatever you get, it's actually really uh, really hard to find uh, a great game. And I, th- I, I thought this game was going to really take off at that price point for £20. I thought this was going to... It doesn't appear to have sold that well, though, does it? it, it like, the, the lower echelons are the top 20 this week, I think. It doesn't... Yeah, it doesn't help that you... I mean, I've tried to buy it, like I said. Um, if, yeah, people aren't buying it in, so... It's tough, but I will get it. Just a, It's so cheap, that, and it's platinum. Yeah. And it, it still sounds fun and funny. Sounds it good. is fun. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I'd, I'd love friends... More. For, I've tried to convince friends to buy it, and they're not biting, unfortunately, but... Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's a game that's continuing, to, and I think it will continue beyond this to grow on me. I think it's something that needs a little bit of time, and there is nuance to the combat. It's just that, you know, it's uh, you just have to, it's got a very very skewed. Uh, there's nothing out there offering what this offers. When you play it online, you're just thinking, I, I haven't actually in. Re- I don't think I've ever played a game like this. I, I say um, Smash Brothers, but that's just just to sort of give you an idea of how chaotic it is. Because you do get everything, you know, mental. The team death matches work a little bit better, but by and large, it's all about mad survival for me. Um, but yeah, it's difficult. The campaign's nice. It's kind of forgettable. It's just Baron from Mad World, you know, that pimp guy, my favourite character right. from Mad World, he's back in it. Um, there's this weird <laughs> Max's dead child subplot that's supposed to tug at the heartstrings, and he's like, why? In a game Jesus. like this, Why? Um, there's a Russian character who bucks the trend of all video games ever by not being called Nikolai, not being called Dimitri. His name's Nikolai Dimitri. Uh, nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and it's so, it's stupid, but it's lovable, and it's it's just I was ready to absolutely fall head in head over heels in love with this, and I'm not. I think it might happen down the line because it's something that doesn't. It, it seems. It is simple, but I think its charms reveal themselves the more you play it. And I, like I said, I have felt the urge to play it multiple times over the last few days so uh, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated but for the moment for £20 get mm. it just don't expect to be blown away yeah I mean it's even I think you can get it for like 16 17 online. yeah you can yeah so yeah for a brand new game that's alright yeah I'm definitely going to get it I just have to find it but um, yeah I am looking forward to it Genuine. and uh, yeah well that's it isn't it uh, another episode in the bag thank you very much for listening um as always, check out the website at thefinitepraylist.com and uh, check out the YouTube channel. It's now called Chet and John. Um, we've already had a bunch of videos up this week and there will be more ongoing, loads of videos, commentaries, stupid little things that we find, um, better on Wii U, all sorts of stuff. So, yeah, get on there, subscribe, do us a favour, hit like. We, we'd appreciate that. True that. And um, follow us on Twitter, at John Denton, Chet Roivers. You know the deal, you know what I'm talking about. We'll see you next week. Over! Cut up out of you, motherfucker. Dean Gaffney, and his deplorable relationship with the N64 classic Buck Bumble.
Hello and welcome to episode 46 of Chet and John's Reassuring New Finite Gaming Playlist. My name is Chet Royvis, with me is John Denton. What up? Uh, same, if, same as usual, we're going to go through the 10 games we've played over the last 7 days from 10 to 1. Games we played the least at 10, games we played the most at 1. Um, that's it, go ahead, John, shoot. Uh, but Kevin, before I start, I'm in a hotel uh, on work, so if the quality is a bit sketchy, apologies. But yeah, straight into it. Uh, number 10 is Retro City Rampage on PlayStation Vita. Uh, barely touched it, literally just waiting for, for you in this podcast, just got uh, a code for it. So it started. Um, it looks cool though, kind of this garish old school top down GTA style thing with a ton of old school game references. Um, I mean, it's only, it's only about an hour, 10 minutes long, so I'll probably get to the end of the episode again and, and see what I think. Because when I played it before most critics, I think, and then all the articles came out the next couple of days, and I thought they'd be split down the middle or at least sort of 60 40 positive, but it's been unanimous raving positivity and then just me in a corner <laughs> moaning so I thought um, maybe I'll give it another go but I still kind of stand by what I said probably but maybe I was a little harsh okay are you going to play the subsequent episodes well that's I might do one more quite expensive but I'll play I don't know I don't know when when so many people write so eloquently about something it does make you think maybe maybe I'm the wrong one yeah fair point uh, yeah, I will have a look at it at some point when I have the facilities to do so. Okay, uh, my number nine is uh, a game called Cars Shooting at Aliens on the Xbox 360. Um, it's an indie game and it's by a, a, a company called Zebra Games. I didn't know anything about them at all. Um, but it's, I think it's done by a parent or a relative of some very young kids. It just seems like something that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, it's split people down the middle, hasn't it? Apparently the charm wears off quite quickly, that's what I've heard. Yeah, I can also see that potentially. But yeah, I'm up for playing more of it. Yeah, no, I need to check, check that out as well. Um, uh, okay, my number 10 is NRA Practice Range on the iPhone. Oh, no way. Oh, did you see it all in the press today? Yeah, I saw, uh, saw you uh, on Tuesday, yeah. Yeah. On Monday, um, whatever. Yeah, it's, I typed NRA, NRA into the App Store, and there are several NRA apps. Most of them are just contain facts about the NRA, but this is the only one that I could see that's actually a game. Um it's it's as crap as you think. It's 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 faulty as well. I played it for about 10, 15 minutes and it crashed on me four or five times. Um, yeah, it's just you're either at a shooting range or you're clay pigeon shooting outside. It's that's about it. It's like it's 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 a barely adequate first person shooter. With the, the gyroscopic controls are really good. If you try to use the analog, you know, use your thumbs, it just basically doesn't work. It's laggy. It's generally unresponsive, and there's a massive dead zone on the screen where just just basically next to where you tap to shoot. So a lot of the times you don't even shoot. I mean, it's 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 absolutely crap. The only thing that's of any interest, it's not even interesting. In the when you're loading, the loading screen contains very, very upbeat and positive facts about the NRA, like how many kids have been educated about gun safety, how many uh, sort of state officials and police have been educated about gun safety, and you know all that stuff. Uh, it, it's crap. Uh, yeah, it sounds crap. It's crap. Yeah, I'm never play that. Um, not for any political reasons or the, <laughs> this ain't a podcast for that. But just yeah, sounded rubbish. Look rubbish. Yep. Uh, so my number nine is I, is Kentucky Route Zero. I spoke to uh, our listener Paul on Twitter, and I've read so much about it this week that I, I thought maybe I was a little bit too harsh. So I listened back, and I was quite harsh on it last week. I definitely still don't think it's the game for me. I, I still really like the style, the music. I still want to like it, and I think that's why I've gone back in because so much of it is up my street. But I just can't hack a game that's that plodding. And apparently, the developers are sort of say so give in to the boredom and let that become part of the tone and that's just like Bleh. you know I can't buy that I'm sorry I, I get what you're saying but I'm not sure but I, it's because the input of the children is massive uh, all of the arts done by very young children um, it's uh, there's at the beginning they talk to you uh, it's incredibly charming basically but the game itself is you're just a car going from left to right using the left analog stick to drive the right analog stick to shoot and you shoot aliens above you right over hills and stuff the physics are they're not terrible as as much as they just they're, I've never seen anything like it trying to keep control of that vehicle is incredibly difficult because it just rolled the, the front tires sort of move out of sync with each other and it tumbles upside down so it's it's actually quite okay. frustrating it's quite frustrating at first um, 
but it's it's the game's not broken. It works within its own confines. So actually, if you spend enough time with it, you, you'll master it. It's very simple, but surprisingly uh, unusual. And then I got to the second level, and to my surprise, it's actually completely different. There's a different vehicle that handles completely differently. It's like it gets loads of air and jumps really high. It's the same game, but it's yeah, the the, the way the car handles completely changes it. And from what I can gather, each level I think there's six or seven has a um, uh, has a different different 